Hi, I'm Dala, and today we are diagnosing an insulation fault. Let's get started. So I figured I would show you the issue. Uh, now I have the car in the garage. Uh, we have the check EV warning light on, and if I pull out leaf spy and uh, check the codes, it will say uh, restart, inhibition, and uh, hybrid battery voltage system isolation error. So yeah, let's tear it apart. Okay, so I got the battery pack out, and the car also out, downgraded to the 40. And I've actually waited one and a half day because I wanted to uh, get all the moisture out of here. I'll put a picture up on screen what it looked like just after the, after the swap. But uh, now we have been waiting and just keeping this area hot. And we are looking at a moisture temperature of uh, around 27 degrees. So ideally you would want to have it below 30% before opening up. Uh, the battery to inspect it. Otherwise you will introduce moisture into the battery. But yeah, let's uh, take some measurements before we open this up. Okay, so one of the best tests is to measure where the service disconnect switch usually sits. There are uh, two uh, connectors. Uh, this separates the pack into two pieces. So we will take a measurement on each point uh, to ground and we will see what kind of uh, values we get. So I now have the negative lead on ground and we will first try this this one and we get a quite big voltage but it's dropping very quick there is some capacitance in this circuit so uh, we will expect this value to drop uh, all the way down to 0, 0.0 volts if uh, everything is good so let's see if we get that Yes, we have 12.6 volts uh, negative to ground, so there is something funky here. Uh, so to open this battery up, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, 10 millimeter bolts all around the edges, but it's also going to be glued shut together, so I'm going to use a uh, knife. I actually have a high voltage tool here uh, that I'm gonna use but in a pinch you can also use uh, these uh, normal like uh, carpet knives. So I will remove all the bolts and then start cutting the seal. That is all the bolts removed. Very quick. Okay, some tips then for cutting this seal. You can actually uh, if I remove this. Uh, you cannot push it too far in because there's going to be a lip on the inside, so you cannot actually accidentally damage anything. But it's just going to take a whole lot of time cutting through the seal all along the battery. So I will just skip ahead. Okay, so it's the next day. I didn't film all this because I needed some time to think. But now I've given it a think and. Now I can share some thoughts about what is wrong here. So I first let it ventilate a bit to get the worst smell out. This stopped after one day. So then I actually started to work on the pack, uh, just diagnosing it a bit. But I will show you the most important steps here. And the pack actually has three separate problems. And we will go over them one by one now. The first problem is that I think this pack has been in quite a severe accident. Uh, if we look at some of the bolts, we can see indications that the whole pack has kind of shifted a bit. And uh, this is also visible on some, take this middle piece for instance, it's a bit crooked. And I think this bolt right here shows it, shows it quite well on how crooked this pack is. So I think this thing has been in a collision and these 62 kilowatt hour packs um, it's worse actually to, to be in a collision with these because they weigh a lot more so it's going to be a whole lot more forces on the internals compared to a, an earlier type of battery pack. Even though Nissan did their best and they actually have a lot of these uh, connection pieces that bolt together all these different sections there's only so much you can do if the car is violently uh, crashed. So yeah, that's the first problem. Uh, now on to the second one. 
If you remember my leaf spy screenshot, uh, there were a few cells that were showing lower voltage than the rest. So I went through the entire pack with a multimeter and I checked each of these different modules. And I wrote down the voltage number on each of the sections. Uh, keep in mind this pack is around 85-86% charge, so it's not entirely full. But here we can see uh, on these front stacks, uh, it's actually this pack is using uh, three different types of modules, uh, type A, B and C. Uh, this front section has the same type of uh, configurations and this is uh, 28.8, same, same, but this one, this one is lower, this one is showing 28.54, so we have a millivolt de derive deviation of around 30 something millivolt. So, uh, compare all, all the other, all all the other sections are also perfectly fine. They are well within tolerances, but this one, this one is a bit lower than the rest. So I've unhooked uh, the bus bars here in preparation for just gonna charge this one manually up. And uh, if we look at the screenshot again, like internally, this thing consists of a lot of modules in uh, series and parallel, but Thankfully, uh, each one of them is uh, lower than the rest, so this should be a very simple operation. I'm just going to take the positive and negative and hook up a hobby charger and charge this one up. So that takes care of problem number two. Now, let's look at the final and worst problem. Okay, now for the final problem. The reason we opened up this pack was to diagnose a loss of isolation uh, issue. And if you don't know what that is, uh, I will link an excellent video uh, that's available on YouTube from Weber Automotive that explains this uh, very neatly. But real short, uh, the high voltage positive and negative inside the battery, the 400 volt, it should never touch ground. It should be floating separately from the normal 12 volt system. And what we have here is a leak. So we have high voltage that is touching the battery negative, the normal 12 volt negative. And we can verify this. I've actually gone and tested with a multimeter, just verified from each uh, individual point to the ground case and see where this strange high voltage leak is coming from. And I've narrowed it down. It's only coming from this module, this specific module here in the rear, which is surprisingly close to this very bent point. So this is where we're gonna look. And I've set up the multimeter. So uh, one lead, this negative lead is connected to uh, the, I think it's the negative terminal of this cell. And the positive, I uh, have the, this bus bar that's normally here has been removed. And uh, the other uh, multimeter lead goes to battery or ground. And normally you should not see any voltage here, but it's showing 12.58 volts. And if I move this lead over uh, to the other terminal, it's also showing now minus 24 volts. So this is bad. We don't want this. So, yeah, now we have to extract this module to assess the damage. Okay, since this repair is quite dangerous, I haven't showed you all this, but uh, when I'm taking things apart, I'm using these very thick insulated high voltage uh, tools that have like rubber coating all over them. And uh, I'm also wearing these uh, uh, class zero high voltage gloves. Uh, it's not enough to just have the tools, you also have to have these gloves on. So I'm gonna continue here with uh, following uh, this uh, manual that Nissan has when they recommend you to, or the order that you should take everything apart in. I will put up some um, links of this. Um, it's kind of hard to find information on the 62 kilowatt hour pack uh, compared to the 40. But uh, I was uh, able to find some material on this, uh, thanks to uh, one of my Patreon supporters, actually. So now I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna spare you all the boring. Uh, it's just mechanical, just bits removing bolts and stuff. But I will skip ahead to actually lifting this thing out. So yeah, let's go. Okay, here's a midway update. I removed all the 
compression bolts that hold these rear stacks in place. And as soon as I did, uh, well the cells of course expanded a bit, as is normal. But I, before I lift this cell out, you actually need a special tool to lift it out that uh, hooks into the corners. I don't have the Nissan tool, uh, but I will improvise. But as soon as I did this, uh, releasing the cells, the isolation issue went away. So that's interesting. I don't know if that's because the top plate isn't connected anymore to the bottom plate, if it's only leaking at the bottom or... yeah. But we still need to remove this cell for or module for uh, further investigation. Let's see. Okay, both modules are out. I put an X on this one so I know that this is the suspect one. And um, if we take a look into the battery, Nissan decided to install this sort of uh, insulation sheet, probably f just for cases like this, because uh, on the front you have the terminals here on the battery. But uh, check this out. I don't know, I think this is very visible on the camera, but there's a dent. There's a dent right beneath where this suspected module was sitting. Uh, so I guess um, I will hammer that out and let's take a look on the bottom side of the module. Okay, here is the underside of the module. Mm. Not much I can say. It looks it looks okay. I don't see any any blemishes at all on the underside. It's actually quite thick steel here on the bottom. But uh, what I'm thinking now is that it might be smart to compress this cell. So if we put back those compression rods and then we tighten everything down uh, just outside the battery and we can see if we can induce the leak this way. So let's do that. Let's measure. Now it's on the compression and it's showing uh, 0, point, 0, point 0 0.0 and on the other side 0, point 0.0. Hmm! Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, let me know your thoughts. What should I try next? Um, I'm a bit puzzled. Uh, why does removing the cell make the isolation go away? And why doesn't it come back when I, I try to compress it again? Hmm, this is an interesting one. On one hand, I could just uh, try to mount everything up back again and put it in the car and just hope that it doesn't come back. Uh, then again, after seeing how uh, squished uh, this battery has become after the collision, I'm also a bit skeptical to run this pack. Maybe it will develop some other type of fault uh, down the line. So yeah, let me know in the comments. I will also be uh, putting this, at least I will fix this balance issue, I will put it on a small uh, hobby uh, lithium charger and I will balance that one, one module up so it's even with the rest. But yeah, let me know in the comments and uh, this repair will progress soon. Thank you for watching and um, see you in the next video. Bye!